If we had to summarize beginning algebra in one word, I think it would be factoring. And you're going to spend the rest of the semester factoring, so you better know what you're doing. We better make sure that you know what the words mean, that's for sure. The words factor or factors and multiples are very different, and I don't think a lot of people know that. If you look at the number 30, a factor of 30 is a number that goes into it or divides into it evenly. 3 is a factor of 30. 5 is a factor of 30. 2 is a factor of 30. There are other factors of 30, numbers that go in evenly. Where as multiples a multiple of 30 is a number that 30 goes into. 60 is a multiple of 30. I multiplied by 2 to get 60. 90 is a multiple of 30. 120 is a multiple of 30. There are way more multiples of a number than there are factors. In fact, there's an infinite number of multiples. Let's do it again for the number 45. 3 is a factor of 45 because it goes into it. 5 is a factor of 45. 15 is a factor of 45. Did you know 15 times 3 is 45? So these are some of the factors of 45. Did you know 45 is a factor of 45? And it's also a multiple of 45. 90 is a multiple. Getting too high for me. 135 is a multiple, and I'm sure there's way more. Way more multiples. Okay, so hopefully you understand those words, and they're kind of opposites, aren't they? If we understand the word factor, you should be able to understand the, the phrase greatest common factor. Of course, it would be the greatest common factor between two numbers. And that's what we're going to ask you to find. Pay attention, boys. I'll show you how it's done. What we're going to do is first, between two numbers, find the actual factors. Hmm. And the way to do that is to break each number up as far as it can go. So we have absolutely every factor at our disposal. Let's look at 30. I'm going to break him up into two numbers that I know multiply it to him. Six and 5. Now it doesn't matter how I begin, I'll end the same way if I keep going until it can't break up any further. 6 can go further, 2 and 3. 5 can't. So what we call the prime factorization of 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. Now 18 I can break up into 2 and 9. 2 can, can't be broken up any further, but 9 can. 9 is 3 and 3. So the prime factorization of 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. Now what I'm looking for is the greatest common factor of these two numbers. Well, what do they have in common? They both have a 2 and they both have a 3. So they both have what it 2 times 3, don't they? 2 times 3 is 6. And in fact, that's the way to find the greatest common factor of two numbers. Excuse me? What if we broke them up differently? I bet you're thinking that. Let's break up 30 and 18 all over again. This time I'm going to break 30 into 10 and 3. But 10 can still break up further, can it? Into 5 and 2. And I still end up with the same numbers. 5, 2, and 3. They're in a different order, but it really doesn't matter, does it? If I went with 18 as 3 times 6 and not 9 times 2, I'd still have to break up that 6, and I'd still end up with a 2 and two threes, And I'd still, for my greatest common factor, have both of them would have a 3, and both of them would have a 2, and I'd still get the same answer of 6. Okay? 
So this is an excellent method to use because it works all the time. We'll do a couple more. Let's do 60 and 140. I want the greatest common factor. I want the largest number that goes in to both of them. I'll break up 60 into 10 and 6. I happen to choose them. 10 breaks up into 2 and 5. And 6 breaks up into 2 and 3. So that's as far as I can go. 140, let's see. We'll do 10 times 14 and then keep going. 10 is 2 times 5 and 14 is 2 times 7. Now survey the two groups and see what they have in common. They both have two twos and a five. So they both have two times two times five as factors and that multiplies to 20 and if you think about it 20 is the largest number that goes into 60 and 140 and that's the greatest common factor. What do you do when you have to do it with variables? Same thing. X squared breaks up into X and X, and Y to the fourth breaks up into four Y's. X to the th third breaks up into three X's, and Y to the second breaks up into two Y's. Same thing, isn't it? What do these two groups have in common? What's the largest factors that are in both? I think they both have two X's and two Y's. So, in fact, the greatest common factor is x squared, y squared. Correct. It's not that bad. How about this one? Well, we're going to do the same thing. Keep breaking them up. 45 breaks up into 5 and 9. Got to keep going. 9 breaks up into 3 and 3. Now, the exponents are easy now, because all you have to do is list them. 18 breaks up into say 2 and 9 and I'll keep going I'll have 1a and 3b's now look at the two groups and see what they have in common they both have two threes don't they they both have 1a and they both have two b's that has to be in both so the greatest common factor after I've multiplied all that is 9a b squared not too bad huh now what are we going to use this greatest common factor for anyway well it's going to be the first step to factoring the first of several steps first thing I have to do when I give you a, a polynomial or a multiple expression a multiple term expression is find the greatest common factor. I can't factor it out until I find it. Well, the greatest common factor in this case, looking at the numbers, the letters, I hope you appreciate is going to be 3xy. You'll get good enough that you can do that in your head. And what I'm going to do once I've found it is factor it out, pull it outside parentheses. Now, how am I going to figure out what goes inside parentheses? Basically, I'm going to do what we did previous. I'm going to do three little division problems. Remember, anything over itself. And that's the first step to factoring. Find the greatest common factor and then divide it out, putting it outside the parentheses. Now the nice thing about these problems is that you can check that it's correct by multiplying. 3xy times 7x better equal 21x squared y, and it does. 3xy times minus 2y does in fact equal minus 6xy squared. And you can see hopefully why I have to have that 1. 3xy times 1 does equal 3xy. So I have the correct answer. Let's try something like this. This brings with it a little bit of a trick that I want you to remember. 
I need to find the greatest common factor. And in this case, looking at the numbers and the letters, basically you could say that it's 2x squared. But remember, if I'm going to factor this thing out, I'm kind of going to get rid of it for the rest of the problem. I might as well get rid of things that I don't like. I don't like negatives, especially in that first term. So if you have your druthers, why not use negative 2x squared? Because once we take it out, we don't have to worry about that stupid negative. Now let's try it. Well, I'm going to do three little division problems. Negative 6x to the fourth divided by negative 2x squared. I got rid of the negative, didn't I? 16x to the third divided by negative x, 2x squared. Now that one is negative, but I don't mind the second one being negative. It's the first one that I want to watch out for. And dividing here, I get a negative 11, because the x squareds cancel. Now that's the answer, but I really should check. Multiplying back, I get each term. Negative times negative is the positive. And negative times negative, and I have the answer. So I know I'm right. Make sure you always check. Okay, we'll take a break here. Go do your homework.